Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans brought to you by the Impact Lounge. Impact Lounge. We are back. It's 2019. Happy New Year. This is Trent alongside my co-host, Kyle. Kyle, say hello to the people. Hey, fuck you, man. Hello, people. Homecoming edition, baby. Total Nonstop Impact. We are back. I feel like it's been a while, Trent, since me and you were together here on the pod. Been, it's been a long time, dude. I think the, what the last one we we didn't do the best ofs. We didn't need to do the best ofs because there was really nothing to add to the best ofs. And then we couldn't do the go home show because uh, I was going to homecoming, and our timings didn't work out. But uh, man, we're here break down homecoming. Interesting perspective, guys. We're gonna come at you with I'm I was there live. Oh, good for you. Kyle was watching it on pay per view, so we got two different perspective of how this is going to go so cool uh cool uh perspective of both sides for, for you guys so and if anybody any of the loungers and any of the impact tribe was also there live leave some comments let us know let let me know what you think about my live perspective and the people who watched it on pay-per-view let, let us know what you think of uh kyle's perspective what do you say kyle should we are we cool to kind of battle the two sides here a little bit yeah, that's what we do here on the Impact Lounge. Uh, we have a pretty right. good track record so far. Uh, we always send a correspondent to the pay-per-view. That's what we do. Yeah, here we go. So we're going to kick it off like we always do, Kyle, with some YouTube comments from the Impact Tribe here on the Lounge. That's why we do it. It's, this is my favorite part of the podcast every favorite week. Part. I mean, that we're nothing without the listeners. We do it for the listeners, the tribe members, the loungers. So, Trent, please kick us off with some comments. Here we go. So we got a, the first comment was an interesting one. It was from one of our longtime listeners. And he says, and he told us about, we were mispronouncing this gentleman's name. And this is who we were, we were calling him Miguedro, right? Remember, remember Miguedro? Miguedro says that we've been reading his name wrong. And he says, if you can pronounce Trey Miguel without any problems, you can definitely pronounce my name right. He said, just add the Miguel and then add Dro to the end. So, uh, but he said, Drew, okay. So he said, but you read it like this, Drew. All right, so he says, all right, so Miguedro. That, no. Miguedro. Miguedro. We're not saying it right. It's not Miguedro. No, it's, it's not Miguedro. It's Miguedro. 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 So Miguedro says, uh, he says he is the first, he's the number one fan of ours. He missed us. So I'm glad this is the, um, this is the comment on the episode you were not on, Kyle. But he still missed him getting his fix of total nonstop impact. So, Megedro, please tell us if we did that right this time. Kyle, you say it again. Megedro. Megedro. We rolled the R, too. Megedro, tell us if we rolled the R, too. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, uh, all right, Megedro, thank you very much. We also have uh, we have Herb Dorr says, My question to the Impact Lounge is, do you think the Lucha Brothers lost because they might be leaving Impact for All Elite Wrestling. I heard that All Elite and Impact are both putting up big bucks for the Lucha Brothers, and I heard that AEW and Impact might be working together. If that's true, man, that's huge news for Impact. I don't doubt it. I don't put anything out of who's working with who, because the stuff we've seen in 2018 is is uh, reflective of, of what's going to happen in 2019, I think. What do you think, Kyle? Oh, without a doubt. Um, yeah, I would like to see Impact and AEW work together, whatever AEW is. I, I'm pretty sure it's just a theory at this point. Uh, no, yeah, seems like it. Nothing set in stone. I'm excited for it, but uh, I, I don't want to see. Uh, I don't want to see like you know direct competition. I don't want to see AEW uh, sweeping up any of Impact's roster. I'd like to see them work with each other. I think it could be beneficial for both sides. I think. Um, I, they got a lot of buzz right now, so if you know Impact stars can work some of their shows, bring some buzz back to Impact, and not for nothing, Impact has a lot of the best professional wrestlers in the United States or in the entire world, honestly, uh, locked up to their roster. So AEW would be smart, you know, booking some of those guys. So yeah, I, I think it would be a great relationship, and I think it would help both sides. It's not one of those things where you know. It's good for one company and really does nothing for the other. This is something where both of them could benefit. So, yeah, I'm on board yeah. for Impact and AEW together. If there is an AEW, I don't know anything about it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I watched the press conference on it. We'll, uh, we'll you know, we can, we're not going to get into that really, but I can see it happening. I know the Lucha Brothers are a hot item right now. I know that I don't know if they're, I don't think they're locked into contracts with Impact. I think they're on appearance deals, but the reason I think they lost 
at homecoming was um was because I think they might maybe put the belts on them in Mexico at the Mexico tapings that are mm. kicking off tomorrow. That's what my, was my theory going in because everybody was uh was questioning that move. So that was just my theory, Herb. Thank you for the comment. That's a good call uh, there, Trent. But uh, you know, yeah. I was thinking that as well uh, at the end of the match. Uh, maybe uh, they were you know heading out you know going over. But then again. LAX is the best tag team in the world, and Impact's number one tag team, so not too yeah. much of a surprise there. Um, we'll see uh, if they're still hanging out, if they're still with the company, uh, you know, come Mexico. But th- that's we'll a good see. call, Trent. Because, uh, you know, what? I on... was thinking at the end of the match there, like, we were paranoid. Like, we kept saying, oh, my God, Conan is going to turn on LAX. And then at the end of the match, there was this feel-good moment, like, of relief. But then it occurred to me it very well can still happen in Mexico. Oh yeah, I, that, my, my, I was banking on everything regarding these guys going to happen in Mexico. So we'll see. Uh, this guy commented and said, "Sorry, but am I the only one who thinks the term superstar is super cringy? When the hell did it become a positive thing for non WWE wrestling promotions and wrestlers and fans to say it? It seriously diminishes the sport aspect of pro wrestling, in my opinion, and makes me view pro wrestlers as circus clowns instead of athletes. Every time I hear it, now." I think he might be referring to, and I left him a comment about this. I think he might be referring to this when Don, I heard Don Callis say it on this um, on this uh, broadcast, and he called the, all the guys superstars after the ten man tag. And I started thinking, I'm like, I don't think I've ever heard that term attached to Impact guys because Impact always was trying to be like more sports and athletic. And I was like, man, it did sound out of place. And I I did catch that. It's funny he mentioned this because I did cut I did catch that. That's a WWE but word. That's like a it is. WWE branded word. The superstars. Yeah, and I mentioned and I mentioned to to this guy that it's a, a thing that WWE did back in the day because they were all about entertainment and they say we're not rest- You know, our guys aren't wrestlers. Our guys are superstars. So it's a branding thing. It's perception is reality. You know, and I think in today's world it sounds kind of cheesy, but uh, yeah, I agree with that one, man. Uh, just a couple more comments. We didn't get too many this this week. It was uh, it was a non Kyle week, so uh, you know what can I say? Yeah, notice the trend there. You know the, the numbers are down when the mayor of Soundbite City isn't in the house. And no coincidence. Com- oh yeah, we got a we got a soundbite on that comment or a comment on that soundbite, I should say. Our buddy. Oh, first HSG Sabu says the boys are back in town. But uh, HSG, that was not Kyle. That was just Trent, though. One boy was back in town. Uh, but Dancing Mike, our buddy Dancing Mike, the contest winner Dancing Mike, says, first of all, great show, and no offense to Brian, but I miss Kyle's special brand of wackiness. In my ass. You know, hey, they missed you, man. They they missed you. Thank uh, you. Who's that, Dancing Mike? Dancing Mike, Thank man. you, Dancing Mike. Thank yeah, you. It's the man. Uh, he says, I didn't buy the pay-per-view, but looking at the results, it seemed kind of underwhelming and predictable. Swan gets the X, Ty gets the knockouts belt with some Kim interference, and it seems like Johnny's douchebag nobody survivor castmates figured into him keeping the world title. And the tag titles match, after the entire world did a great fantasy booking for intrigue surrounding this match, what do they go with? LAX retains, then Conan comes out and gives them all hot cocoa while they braid each other's hair and play mystery day. I can't even get through this. <laughs> Do that again, Trent. Please, please start over uh, with that. Uh, he says, <laughs> Dancing Mike, sorry. Nancy Mike says, at the, in the tag team titles match, after the entire world does a great fantasy booking job for intrigue surrounding this match, what do they end up going with? LAX retains, then Conan comes out and gives them all hot cocoa while they braid each other's hair and play mystery date. Wow. <laughs> oh, Dancing Mike, the guy dancing kills. Mike. He always kills the room. Slaughters. Uh, so I am. Le- so I was less than under. So I was less than whelmed. He says, "The big news is the big news is Kyle." Is he says the big news is Kyle's air fryer and which flavor pizza rolls did he make? That's that's what he wants to know. And then Dancing Mike closes it out by saying. And finally, I'm glad Impact will be on Twitch, but I'm still. But since I'm never home on Fridays at that time, I need to know where to catch replays. Any help will be appreciated. Thanks again for the great shows. Real quick, I'm going to address that, and then, then you're going to talk about your pizza rolls, Kyle. I found on ImpactWrestling.com, they have a whole thing about what you need to know about Twitch. Normally, Twitch broadcasts have a VOD as soon as it broadcasts on Twitch. 
I believe they're not going to have a VOD for the weekly impact right away because it's going to be going to the GWN. So check with that, read up on that. It's on impactwrestling.com, all the details about Twitch. If you're not watching it on pursuit, take a look at it, see what you guys think. And, um, you know, kind of get familiar with it because that is what's happening. It's pursuit and Twitch simulcast. All right, Kyle, the big news, what kind of flavor, what flavor pizza rolls did you make? All right. Well, for the listeners that might be new, just coming around here, uh, we've got a lot of inside jokes here. We've got a lot of regular listeners and commenters. Uh, so you really got You got to stay with us every single week. Uh, a couple weeks back around Christmas time, there was talk about getting air fryers for Christmas. Uh, I got one for Christmas. Uh, our buddy cousin Brian got one for Christmas. Trent, yeah. I think you're going to get yourself one post-Christmas here. But uh, yeah, so I got my air fryer for Christmas and... Uh, Dancing Mike, he was very pro air fryer in the comments. He was letting us know his air frying habits, what he likes to air fry, and he mentioned the pizza roll. So yes, I got my hands on a box of Totino's pizza roll bag, yes. rather bag of Totino's. Um, original cheese for me. See, Dancing Mike mentioned like uh, pepperoni and bacon and stuff like that. I'm a little simple with the uh, you know pizza rolls. Now, Trent, that might come to you as a surprise because I live in excess every yeah. other regard. But when it comes to Tatino's pizza rolls, I just want the regular cheese. And uh, I got to say, Dancing Mike is onto something. The air fryer, they come out perfectly. Uh, I mean, uh, this, this is kind of shocking to hear that you are are a plain cheese kind of guy. You you are all about the excess. Any extra calories you can find, you'll put them on your food. But uh, cheese, just regular cheese, huh? All right. Yeah, you know, tur- what, I'm the type me. of guy, you know, I could stuff bacon, grease into anything really and be satisfied. But uh Certain things are just simple. They're supposed to be left simple. Me personally, I like the regular Totino's pizza roll. He, Dancing Mike was talking about bacon ones. I've never seen those on the shelf before. Maybe where he lives, they have them. But uh, as for me, going regular Totino's pizza roll. But yes, I, I am on Team Air Fryer. Cousin Brian's on Team Air Fryer. Dancing Mike's on Team Air Fryer. The only one not on that team is you, Trent. So you, you better get to your local appliance store. I think I'm going to have to. And uh, I'd like to hear from the, uh, the lounge here. Do you guys all, who else has a goddamn air fryer? I mean, who, what am I missing out on here? But uh, all right, let me know. All right, guys, we're gonna jump into it. Homecoming pay per view. This is this is big stuff. This was this was an epic show. January sixth, twenty nineteen, live from the Impact Asylum in now, Nashville, Tennessee. Hold on Tennessee. a second, Trent. Before we start the show here, give me oh. a little background about your trip, man. You can't just – how are you going to do that to our tribe members, our loungers? We can't just oh. dive directly into the first match. How was your yeah. trip? How was the ride right. there? Give, give us oh, some okay. deets. The deets are – check this out. I'll, I'll condense it. There's a lot of deets. The night before uh, Homecoming, I was at a show called Warrior Wrestling because a promotion called Warrior Wrestling. Um, in Nashville? Little, no, it's in Chicago, south side of Chicago. They're a showcase promotion. They do about maybe four shows a year, but those four shows are huge. And who they had on it, you know, they had Penna, Phoenix, Ethan Page, Rich Swan was there, uh, Tessa was there. As, I'm trying to remember as far as uh, as far as impact rest, impact uh, talent goes. Uh, it was like an impact show away from impact. Yeah, Austin Aries was there shows. too. Oh, double A. Was double A. I said hello to him. I said what's up. I mean, you know, he remembered me from uh. From a little while back, and uh, we just said hello. He was in good spirits, you know. It looked good, but hey, buddy, uh, that's you want to grab a cheeseburger after the show? Yeah, yeah. He kind of he, he's kind of solo, man. He doesn't really he doesn't really hang too much. Uh, Eddie Edwards and Moose were also there, and um, they were hanging. I mean, Aries has kind of a weird dynamic with people, so I don't know. He does his own thing. But uh, I was at Warrior Wrestling with the whole crew. We were hanging out. Uh, my buddy Basil, who's um, who was doing ringside photography who also did ringside photography for impact over the weekend he was uh doing it for warrior we got to see a lot of the crew i mean we talked to all the guys you know i mean moose and eddie were like just about to ride with us at one point they're like you guys driving now like after the show we're like yeah they go man we should just jump in with you guys but they didn't they you know i'm like why would you guys jump in with us you guys got plane tickets what the hell are you gonna jump in with us for but they oh, so you hung out for the uh, you hung, but when you went to uh, Nashville, uh, you guys stayed for um, the extra taping as well, not just the pay per view. Yeah, right, yeah, cool. yeah. We stayed we stayed for both nights, but um, but yeah, man, we we did Warrior. We saw a lot of the crew. We said, all right, we'll see you tomorrow. And we just jumped in the car. We got two cars, and uh, I was like, there was five of us going down, and we just um, we drove through the night, man. It was seven hours to get there, and we got down to uh, to Nashville about uh, I want to say seven a.m. Couldn't fall asleep. None of us slept in the drive, really. 
Couldn't fall asleep. Got up, went to Cracker Barrel, Southern Cracker Barrel, which is nice. Don't worry, everybody. There was a, a Waffle House trip in there, too, not to, not to panic. No, anybody. no. I love Cracker Barrel. You did right. You did the uh, right my thing. Fa- my favorite restaurant. I love Cracker Barrel. But, uh, yeah, man, so then that night, we, we got a little rest. We went, then we got, that night, we went over to the Impact Zone or the, um, the Asylum, not even the Impact Zone. This is the original. This is the OG. This is the goddamn Asylum, Kyle. This was it, man. Uh, dude, I got to say, walking into this building, everything came rushing back to me. I have all the memories of what the hell went on in this building. It was surreal for me to be in there, dude. I watched every single Wednesday pay-per-view, grew up on this company. It was awesome. And I met a guy right when I walked in. I mean, I knew a bunch of people. I knew a lot of the crew, so I'm kind of looking for people I know. But um, I met a gentleman named John Arezzi. Kyle, do you know John Arezzi? You're a Long Islander. Do you know the name? You know what? I believe I have heard the name. uh, One of those geeky nights in a YouTube hole. Is that the guy that had the radio show with Vince Russo back in the day? That's the one. So John Arezzi. Wow. It's the guy who he was the first guy to basically do a radio show, wrestling radio show. Did it on Long Island, and uh, he's the guy who him and Vince Russo became friends early '90s. You know, they they started doing stuff together, and uh, John was in the business forever. He he has rare footage. I mean, this guy was doing eight millimeter stuff ringside at the at the Garden. I mean, this this guy's been in the business, and recently him and him and Russo had a big falling out. Recently, they had a huge reunion. They did a YouTube call. And they did a YouTube interview together, a video one. It was really awesome to see two old friends reunite and cry and whatnot. It was really cool. So I walked in. I'm talking to some people. And I look over. I see I see this guy. I go, that looks like John Arezzi. So I, I go, excuse me. Are you John? Is your name John? He goes, yeah. I'm like, you're John Arezzi? And he's like, yeah. So we started talking. And I told him how you know it was awesome that he's finally back around the business. And you know, him, I loved his interview with Russo, him talking to Vince again. It was really cool, man. Super nice guy. We talked a bit. Really, really, real cool to to connect with a guy who knows so much history. If you guys aren't familiar with John Arezzi, he's on Twitter now. Follow him. This dude is really cool. But uh, he lives in Nashville, so he's kind of getting his feet wet, you know. Again, he was business. enjoying some Impact Wrestling as a fan. He was. He was there. There's a fan. He was. Uh, he said he was a guest of Conan. Conan asked him to come in. Wow. And he's a friend of Conan's from way back. But uh, Conan invited him, so he's like, oh, I'm kind of, you know, kind of getting back out there. I got. He's like, I got storage units full of footage. That I've, that's never seen the light of day. He's been putting a little bit out on his Twitter. Dude's super cool. But uh, anyway, man, that building, Kyle, it's everything I wanted it to be, man. It was surreal. There was no no girls in dancing cage or dancing in cages, though. I gotta say that was. Uh, I was gonna get to that. Uh, you know, well, I was I was a little disappointed that you know. First we thing we said, no no cages. <laughs> we couldn't no fit cages. that into the itinerary, you know. No. I, I, I guess uh, you know, 2019 social norms are a little different. Not going to yeah. see things like, uh, you know, women in dancing cages. But, hey, old school TNA. Yeah. But I will say this. We walk in, and the building's got a magic to it, for sure. It's got this. It's got a very it's got a very magic, magical vibe to the place, man. It feels really special when you go in there. And we walk in. The ultimate X is hanging right there, man. And so you walk in. I saw it. I just was like, holy shit. That's an ultimate X. It's like right there, man. It's it's chilling, and it's gonna be the opener. Belts hanging and everything, and it was like it was surreal, and um, you know, I just made some rounds, man. I met a bunch of awesome people who love our podcast. So guys, I'm sorry I couldn't get everybody's name. It was such a, it was chaotic. I met a few of them the next day at the. You TV ran camp. into people that actually know us and recognized ran, you. Are you for real? Tribe members, ran, listeners, tribe members, tribe members who recognized me, who called you out for not being there. Who said to say hi to you? They said we do a great job. So guys, I'm so sorry if I don't remember your names, but uh, thank you guys for tracking me down and and, and saying something and, and saying hi to Kyle. I mean, I, listen, Kyle, dude, I missed you there, man. I, I feel like you should have been there with me. Yeah, you know, what, and if they missed me too, they should have kicked over some money. That's what they yeah. should have did. Gee, bastards. Yeah, thank. Yeah, you know, it's like a nice, kind words and a handshake aren't worth a plane ticket to Kyle. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Hey, too bad, but no. In all seriousness, very cool of those guys to, to seek me out and say hi. Got to meet uh, got to meet a bunch of old fans I've seen at other shows, uh, especially Bill Gardner. Bill Gardner, the guy in the front row, EC3 jacket guy, now now Moose Vest guy who's at every show. I've known Bill for a couple of years. Got to see my old buddy. But, um, dude, it, it, was, it was awesome to meet a bunch of cool people. We got a great seat 
facing the hard facing the aisle. So we were not on a hard cam, but we were facing straight ahead looking at the aisle. So great view of everything, man. I got to ask Trent before we start the review here right now, uh, real quick. Uh, I know you went to Smashville, as they say, Smashville. Uh, or did Smash you, Vegas? Smash Vegas? Smash Smashville? Vegas. Uh, I got to ask you, Trent. Uh, I, I was wondering this from the day you left. Did you get to try any of the famous red spicy Nashville chicken? Dude, okay. All right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, and then I'm going, we're going to start the review. All right, so we, we, we were determined to get the hot chicken. We went to this place called Hattie B's on a Sunday. Hattie B's is religious, and they close at like 3 o'clock. So we're like, what are we going to do? So we look around. We find a place called Party Fowl. Party Fowl was open. So we go there, and I order. Now, they have they, there's a couple levels of hot chicken they got. They got mild, medium, hot, and poultry geist. Well, look, I was like, you know what? I got to get the poultry geist because if I'm going to be here, I'm doing this. I got to go all in, baby. I got to go all in on this. So I got the poultry guys, Kyle. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yes. Yes. This was the hot. This was like if I actually put my mouth on the stove. That's how fucking hot this was, man. This was uh, it was so goddamn painful, but it was so goddamn delicious at the same time. Oh, man. Yeah. I was going to say uh, definitely burned on the way out as well, huh? Gets worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll sum that up. So I go to the bathroom. Take a leak after the, after we're done eating before we leave. I know better. I know I should wash my hands first, you know, so I don't touch my my fucking I don't I don't touch my my pal down here with you know spicy hands because I know what can happen. I wash my hands first, then I take a piss, and then we leave. I'm like, all right, we're in the car. We're in cousin Brian's car. We're going to the to the to the asylum, and I'm sitting in the back and I'm like, why is my why is my crotch burning? What the fuck? And I started feeling like discomfort. I'm like, holy shit. No matter how much I washed my hands, that shit seeped into my 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 pores and my hands. And dude, it was burning my burning my cock. That was on fire. Oh man. I was on fire, dude. I was like, holy shit. Holy what the fuck? So I, it took a while. I, I was luckily I was in the back seat and it was dark and I, I could, you know, kind of console him and rub him a little bit. Not, you know, not that kind of rub, but just kind of hold him and you know, get that burning down. But this is getting uh, creepy really quick, Trent. Dude, I, listen, I'm trying to say it was on fire, dude. The fucking, it's the hot chicken got, had me on fire. What can I say? But, dude, all right, so it finally went away, you know, after after maybe like 20 minutes. It was rough. It was a rough, rough go. But that being said, my taste buds were burnt for three days. I swear to you, I, I, my, I, my mouth felt dry for three days because it was that fucking hot. It burned my, burned my mouth, dude. It was terrible. But, but delicious. I would say you got your money's worth in that case. But, Trent, let, let's get to the reason they're all here. The reason they've all been listening this whole time. Let's get into the review. But I had to hear about the trip first. I think I think I could speak for everybody here. We needed some background. We wanted to know how Trent's trip went. And I'm glad you had a good time. I'm glad everything went successful. Excuse me. I, I think the reason they wanted to listen was to talk about my burning cock. But I guess not. All right. Well, all right. Well, I guess, I guess we'll go talk about homecoming. <laughs> all right let's check it off guys homecoming the return to the asylum what a show what a show full house that place was sold the f out yeah, man. is it that true place. trent that uh that's the type of venue um you're expecting it to be much bigger on the way there and then when you get in it looks like a lot smaller i only say that because I saw a few pictures of, uh, you know, uh, production before the show started, and without anybody in it, the building looks so small. But as soon as the fans pack in and the lights go out, it just turns into something completely different, transforms into, uh, on television, what looks like a huge arena. Yeah, it's not as big as I, I thought it was going to be, but, um, but uh, it, yeah, I, I guess that, that camera shot, you know, kind of really, um, really gives it a nice, nice full, fuller look. Not fuller look, but like kind of gives because the camera's able to absorb all of it at once. No, no. What I was gonna say is that um, it reminds me so much of uh, the ECW arena, especially with yeah. like the perch, like comparable to like the Eagle's Nest. Uh, same it, thing, dude. Same thing. Cameras in the like same it. spot. Uh, very similar to ECW. There's a lot of things that remind me of Current Impact. Uh, you know, reminds me back of ECW. Yeah, it, dude. Absolutely. It's what exactly what I thought too, but. Um, yeah, once everybody was packed in there, man, it was it was it was it was like it was going like the people were nuts, dude. But um, it was uh, yeah, we kicked it off, guys. Ultimate X was the first one to kick it off, and uh, Rich Swan, Trey Miguel, 
Ethan Page, Jay Christ. This was Smash Mouth all day. Like you could see him work up to it, man. What a hell of a match, Kyle. On TV, how do you think this came off? Because I'll give you a little live perspective in a second. Oh my God! I mean, Ultimate X match: Rich Swan, Ethan Page, Trey Miguel, Jay Christ. Totally insane. Everything on paper you expect it to be. A total shit show spot fest. Uh, amazing. So these guys are acrobats plus wrestlers plus video game characters. Unreal the stuff they were doing out there. But Trent, I have to ask you a question here. Um, yeah. On TV, somewhere in the match, uh, Rich Swan hit a dive on the outside. And when he dove, the camera like kind of zoomed in on him and just... There was... Everybody listening that watched at home knows exactly what I'm talking about. There's a spot where the camera zooms in on Rich Swan and just sticks on him for a few minutes, and uh, it was it was weird. Uh, you could tell they were you know hiding whatever was going on in the ring. And if you know classic TNA, the belt has fallen down before. Trent, I'm gonna ask you flat out: Did the belt fall during the Ultimate X match? Because that's what we all thought at home. The belt did fall. And I'm gonna tell you this: Ooh. the belt the belt did. It's what happened was. The last climber at that point, right before that happened, the last climber, uh, it, it was I think it was like three of them on there, and it was really bouncy. The belt was not strapped on too tight, which I can never figure out why they don't strap it up all the way. Because I mean, if you're whoever's going for it, can just pull all the buttons off in one shot. But I can understand too because they want they don't want the guy to struggle when he's up there. But the bounce was really bouncy, and what was happening was. Because of how they had it set up, every time the guy hit a corner, it kind of like would would rick it would kind of send waves up to Ultimate X. Well, anyway, they did that move, and it's funny because it didn't fall off like right after somebody was up there. It they went ahead and did that dive, and then it fell, kind of just off some 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 vibrations. But dude, I gotta say, I know I could tell what they were doing. They were doing with the camera, what you're seeing, but real quick, they what's with the quickness, they had the the ring the bell keeper. And Kid Ref got jumped in, got a ladder from underneath the ring, dove into the ring, put the ladder up. Kid Ref ran up, retied the belt. They got down, folded the big ass ladder, had it underneath the ring, and like nothing ever happened, dude. It was so sm- I was more impressed with how smooth that was. Like it didn't even bother me the belt fell. It was super smooth. And I, what, what I, li- I liked about it though was I remember back in the old um, in the TNA days, <coughs> excuse me, when it fell. They stayed on. They stayed on it, and then I don't remember Mike Tanay kind of like covered it by saying it fell again. Let's throw that up again. You know, it became a thing. But this time, I liked that they they did they made their efforts to cover that, and that's what mattered to me. It didn't, I mean, I, was it, did it look bad that they were on Rich for that long, or they, were they like kind of brawling on the outside? What do you What did you see? No, I they zoomed in on him sitting there on the ramp, and it just froze on him. It, it was it was a weird. It felt like a couple minutes, but honestly, it was probably 60 seconds. But uh, it dragged on a little. It was a weird moment, but we, you heard a thump as he was diving. So we all kind of figured that was probably the sound of the belt hitting the ground. But we yeah. nobody was sure. We had no idea what was going on. That was one thing. Okay, this show was perfect from a performance standpoint. Everybody on the roster uh, just went 500, just killed it, brought their A-plus game. But... There were some hiccups with production as far as uh, video and audio goes uh, throughout the show here and there. Not too much, but this was an example of that. And hey, it happens. It it can't be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it was, was, you know, things happen, man. But it was cool. As long as they covered it up, it was, it worked out for me. But um, But what's important here is the match. And uh, everybody there just uh, brought their A game for sure. Um, Ethan Page, very impressive. Uh, he, super impressive. He, he can hang with the young guys, even though he's a bigger dude. Uh, super impressive. Uh, Jake Crist. I mean, you know Jake Crist, but uh, Trey, Trey, Trey really shined in this match. This was like, a, I'm not going to say it was a first impression because he has been on the show before, but this was a huge moment for him. This was his first, you know, big match on a pay-per-view yeah. also. Yeah, it was, man. Ethan Page, I'm super, super impressed with. Every he he blew everybody away. Yeah, but Rich Swan stole the match for me. I think his performance, he he deserved it at the end. I was happy when he won. And there was a spot in there where um, 
think Jay Chris tombstoned him on the ramp and like dragged him up. You know what I mean? To try to you yeah. know take him out and get rid of him. But uh, I loved it. I loved at the end how um you know it really made it look like you know Trey had a shot, but Rich Swan took it took it in the end. And uh, the way uh, Trey was just so shocked, staring at him. I wouldn't mind if I see uh, Rich Swan versus Trey Miguel, uh, you know, on Impact TV. Based off of that right there, because now Trey has a reason to be mad. Yeah, dude, it it was perfect. They they set up a nice thing going forward with that. But um, man, I was uh, Ethan Page, like you said, he's super impressed everybody because everybody expected they were kind of shocked when he got in, and um, they kind of expected him to more be more like the base, you know, here. But he was flying, man. He was climbing and flying, dude. I was, he blew me away. Ethan Page definitely blew me away on this one. But uh, Rich Swan picks up the win, new X division champion in Rich uh, Swan. I love how he caught it with his legs, too. That was great. Awesome. That was perfect. Awesome. But then, Trent, the camera's cut to ringside to Josh and Don, and uh, Don is seen embracing his Nashville culture and wearing a 20-gallon hat is what they noted it as, a 20-gallon hat. And uh, 20 gallon. <laughs> he said that uh, you know he planned Ultimate X on the back of a cocktail napkin. There's another little note here I have from the commentary <laughs> spot there. But uh, just the scene, the visual of Don Callis wearing a 20-gallon hat was tremendous. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, he he walked out to go to the commentary table with um with the hat on and everybody just kind of was laughing. Big Even Bob. Ed Nordholm had a hat on. He was Big Ed Bob. Nordholm. It was great. So I hope they're wearing sombreros in Mexico. <laughs> I hope they do. Then we but, got uh, uh, Brian Cage backstage. Uh, were you guys getting all these on TV, like uh, on no. the screen? None of them? We no, uh, we were not getting these backstage. What was interesting was uh, – I think they filmed them live because we could hear some of them going on backstage. So, like, yeah, yeah we get Brian Cage backstage getting interviewed by Mackenzie Mitchell. Uh, you know, I'm going to miss Mackenzie Mitchell. I don't know if you're aware of this, Trent, but yeah. she's done. She put it out on social media just uh, two days ago. Great experience with Impact Wrestling. Um, I heard a rumor online, something about her heading towards the NFL. I don't know if that's true. Uh, I did read that somewhere. There's uh, some big sports broadcasting in her future. So, uh, you know, I'm going to miss Mackenzie Mitchell. But you know what I was thinking, Trent? What's that? It's not such a bad thing that she's leaving. Hear me out. Before you chew my ass, hear me out. Uh, Mm -hmm. She is such a beautiful woman. Like, she's breathtaking. She's a stunningly beautiful. She could be a supermodel. And every time she's interviewing people, I have trouble focusing on the promos because you got this stunning, gorgeous woman standing there, you know? We need more uh, R.I.P. We need some more Gene Okerlunds, you know, some more ugly mugs like J.B. around. i got to focus on the promo, not the not the 10 model. <laughs> it's more ugly mugs out there. Yeah. No, yeah, more I agree. JBs. She's beautiful, man. She's gorgeous, and she, she wore great outfits. She was beautiful, dude. She did a great job, though. She was a natural. I mean, she got thrown into a business that she really had no, you know, from what I know, no experience or prior interest in. And uh, she made it her own and did very well. Uh, She was a great backstage interviewer and uh, just wish her the best in whatever she does now. Absolutely. No, she uh, she was fantastic. We really are going to miss Mackenzie Mitchell. But what, what happened backstage? What was that Mackenzie Mitchell thing? About she interviewed Cage, you said? Yeah, no, we, we get the quick uh, quick Brian Cage interview, you know, uh, talking his shit. And then uh, moving along there, we get a video package covering the Dark Alley Sue Young saga, you know, before the match. I love that. I mean, typical pay-per-view uh, fair before the match. You get your recap video. But Impact just has some of the sharpest, you know, production, I think. They put some of the best recap videos together on their pay-per-views. So good little thing there. Um, I had my buddy with me. He's not a big... Um, He's not a big Impact fan. Uh, like, I have a few friends that are, like, casual wrestling fans. Uh, but this mm-hmm. this caught him the most because he's, he's more of a dark guy. He's very into, you know, heavy metal and stuff like that. And just, uh, I guess, the visual of Sue Young and Dark Alley and then Rosemary, I, this was his uh, his big uh, show stealer, definitely. But, uh, I, I, oh, my God, man, get into it. Alley and Sue Young versus Kira Hogan and Jordan Grace. Yeah, we needed to slow things down a little bit because after coming off that Ultimate X, it was uh, everybody was hot. So we need to kind of give us uh, go drastic difference. You know, you had Sue's got that slow entrance and whatnot, and uh, so I kind of gave everybody a chance to breathe and absorb this match a little more. So that was cool. Uh, a lot of you know, it was, it was a standard tag match, a lot of back and forth. The real story was in the end with um, you know after Ali and Sue defeated uh, Kira and Jordan. The real story was in the uh, in the coffin, man. That was that. That's where it really came down to. 
everybody kind of saw it coming. Yeah, yeah. No, you know? we all called it too. We called it at home. We knew Rosemary's in there. Rosemary looked different to me though when she popped out. What do you think? Yeah, no, a uh, bit of a different look. Um, looks like she did. I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. I saw she said it herself in her own Rosemary language online, something about being in the undead realm. Uh, she packed on a couple pounds in the meat suit. Yeah. She's not huge, but she's a little thicker. Nothing wrong with me. Uh, I saw some asshole wrestling fans, you know, saying stupid things about her online. But, I mean, she was injured. She was out for a while. Give the girl a break. Uh, she, great look, though. Um, I, I liked a bit of a different look. Uh, you know, it's a little refreshing, you know. But, uh, no, great, great to see Rosemary back for sure. And uh, I got to say, um, the way the match ended uh, – Allie took the bloody glove from Sue and locked it in on Kira. And I just want to say, Trent, it's a good thing that Allie got the bloody glove from Sue and not uh, anything bloody from Priscilla Kelly. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it could be worse. You could have been on the receiving end of Priscilla Kelly. That uh, That's the day before that. So, yeah, I'll take the bloody glove over yeah, that. Yeah, but what does this mean now? Because, like, let's analyze this for a second. Uh, we've been putting this over every single podcast that – um. This is a tremendous, insane, long-term storyline involving almost all of the women in the company. Uh, and it's there's no end in sight. Now Rosemary's back in the picture. What do you think happens from here, Trent? I think they, they really go hard on Rosemary and Allie. Just go really go hard on this feud and her trying to pull Allie back. But you can stretch this out for a while. I'm thinking Sue's going to get in between this. You know, Sue's going to get involved in this. Um, Kira's going to get involved in this somehow. I, I, I'm I, even predicting a Kira turn, to be honest, and just to keep piling more shit. Evil on Kira? Top of like dark Kira, you're suggesting? I think so. I think so. I, I'm thinking Kira could turn. I thought I Kira and Jordan Grace did great together out there. I thought they had good chemistry as a tag did. team. I wasn't expecting them to, to be honest, but I, they impressed me. I, that's another thing. You were so critical about Jordan Grace. How do you think she did with her performance? She did great at this. This was, you know, I was never a huge Jordan Grace fan, but this one, I feel like she took great bumps. She really sold her ass off while looking strong. I think that was um, the part that impressed me the most is that she really, she really went out there to to establish that match. So I, I, I was impressed with Jordan Grace, man. Never been a big fan, so she really got me on this one. Glad that you? you're uh, glad that she's winning you over there, Trent. But uh, bottom line, Rosemary's back. So then we get a quick little video package uh, recapping the Moose and Eddie feud. Uh, so next match here, match number three of the night, Moose versus Eddie Edwards, Falls Count Anywhere match. Uh, oh, dude. This, this was one. classic. This had the spirit of classic TNA in it and also like ECW. It was just the perfect hardcore Falls Count Anywhere match. But there was a spot in here when they took it into the crowd and they went over to what Raven used to call the perch back in the day. You remember the classic match where, uh, you know, he tossed yep. Sandman off that uh, little uh, perch. I got goosebumps there because that was the spot for me in the pay-per-view where like I felt like, oh, wow, like old TNA, but in a good way, in a good way. I we all kept thinking that Raven was going to come out on the perch. Exactly. That, that that's point. his perch. That's I I thought that too. He could pop up from the back and you know toss Moose for him. But eh. we'll see. I, I, I was surprised really, they didn't bring Dreamer and Raven into the match. I thought last I, minute it would be something. I was too. I was surprised, man. I I thought they were going to they were going to do something like that. But uh, I was convinced that as soon as they got out to the perch, Raven was going to come out. I I it boggled my mind. He didn't. But. Um, Dude, they, they brawled all over the place, and they, they passed by us to go up to that perch, and that was nuts. There was a couple of uh, – there was somebody up there. I think it was Chase Stevens from the Naturals. I think he was up there in that perch. Wow. I, I think I saw him up there. Um, yeah, I saw a picture so, of him. He was at the show. I saw that. Yeah. They, they were posting that online. He was hanging out. And I think Jake Christ's wife was in the perch as well. Um so, yeah, there's a couple of people up there, but, yeah, mostly the fans. But, yeah, they, they didn't go uh, – or in that, I should say, the upper deck, but the net, which was next to the perch. But, no, nothing, nobody came out. But, man, definitely a, a definitely near a near show stealer, man. They, these guys had everybody popping. Dude. Yeah, nearly. Was, near near show stealer for sure. At this point, this was the show stealer at this yeah. point. The only third match of the night. But uh, there's one funny spot in there uh, on commentary. I know you couldn't hear it, but at home um, – when Eddie Edwards went onto the ring and pulled out Kenny, his uh, kendo stick, Kenny, 
Uh, Don yeah. joked on um, commentary and said that uh, that might be the most dangerous Kenny in the wrestling business today. So a little shot at Kenny Omega. <laughs> Who's like his really good buddy, too. He loves Kenny. So oh, yeah. that's awesome. That's a nice little nod. But the best but, part for me, though, was when uh, <laughs> Alicia did her best Beulah McGillicuddy impression. I- I'm sure you guys were going crazy for that. Yeah, that was that people you know, I think it finally she finally found a way to to get really over and kind of get herself uh, established more was when she fucking lost it and just started wailing on Moose. Everybody popped, man. Everybody went nuts. The crazy finally rubbed off on her. Finally. She 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 couldn't avoid it, man. She's uh she's married to the guy. So what the hell do you expect? She definitely gave Moose a concussion, that's for sure. Yeah, she she did. I think Moose was he was beat, <laughs> but uh, it's funny though. But yeah, no. Josh said on commentary, she's crazy, and Don is short. Well, she's married to Eddie Edwards. Yeah, there you go. See, Eddie picks up the win, uh, yeah. defeating Moose with that DDT. And uh, all right, next one, a little Kyle Sammy Callahan with... promo in there. Actually, you didn't oh, see okay. that. I'm sorry. Let me stay ahead. on top of the promos here. Just gotta all gotta right. acknowledge him. Um, quick little Sammy Callahan promo. Sammy alone, no Dave, no Jake. Um, classic, you know, close up Sammy Callahan. That 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 face up in the camera. They do the impression. He's like, I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to take on Willie Mack. And Willie Mack doesn't stand a chance because we're in Nashville. And even though Nashville's not Ohio, it's still my town, and I'm going to take everything. Do you understand? I am taking everything from Willie Mack today. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Sammy warned Willie Mack about stepping in OVE's business. Sammy swears that Willie should have listened to Rich Swan. So, yeah, quick little promo there. And then we get the match. Uh... Willie versus Sammy with da- with uh, Dave Christ. Uh, hell of a match there, Trent. Uh, give me a, give me your perspective from the crowd. I'm a huge Sammy Mark, as you know, but uh, Willie, as I as I mentioned uh, when we talked about him earlier or last year, I could say he was my big surprise new guy, new to me guy last year. I I can't believe how athletic this dude is with that size, man. This guy is like one of the most athletic guys who you look at him, you're like, ah, he's what can he do? He's by overweight. He can't move around too much by just a big guy, you know, this power move guy. He's so fucking athletic and he doesn't get blown up in the ring. This guy's competitive match all the way through. This one, this was a, a sleeper hit, man, because of that. Because, uh, you know, it was, it was a match thrown together, I think, on the go home show. So it was, we didn't have too much time to absorb this one. But. Dude, Sammy versus anybody, or I should say Sammy versus everything, is always pretty good, but Willie Mack is a great opponent, dude. Willie Mack shined. Um, funny, I was telling you before that I had my buddy with me, and uh, he's he's a very casual fan. All right, he's one of the people that like loved wrestling when WCW and WWF were around, and then when WCW died in 2001, like wrestling died for him. You probably know a lot of people like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he's one of those guys, and, like, he still loves wrestling in his heart. Like, he can talk about old wrestling and watch old wrestling all day. Like, he's still into wrestling. It's, he just, for some reason, he blocks out anything new. So whenever there's an Impact show, I like to invite him over and see see how he feels. And I know I'm going to catch him hook, line, and sinker, and I think I did with this show. But uh, I have to note here, I like to take his opinions and uh, I like to hear what the casual fan, you know, not somebody like us that watches Impact every single week. I like to hear what they see and what they think about it. And he was bitching because... And I want to hear from the loungers. I want to pass this to the tribe. Um, he was bitching that Willie Mack was using the stunner. He was saying that Willie Mack shouldn't use the stunner, and the stunner is way too signature, and he has no business using it. Do you agree with that? Because I don't. No. I, here's, dude, if your buddy has been watching Move Cycle, everybody's using every move and out that's there. That's what I said, but he's saying the stunner is way too signature. Nah. shouldn't be touched. Nah, dude, everybody's using this. People, there's like a 1,000 people using the stunner. Super kicks, uh, you know, diamond cutters. It's all out there now, man. Most of these aren't even finishers at this point sometimes. So, no, it, it, it's – look, if you really put it in perspective, it's been 20-plus years since that stunner became Steve Austin's. 20 years is enough time to cycle something out, man. The only reason we hang on to it more in this day and age is because we have it – the internet makes it easy. It makes it feel like it was yesterday. But, dude, that's 20 years, man. 20 years is a long time. It's over. Like it's not his. It's it. It could. It's wrestling's move, man. That's it. 
Yeah, no doubt. No, I agree with that. I, I thought his, uh, you know, I thought he overreacted. Thought it was stupid, but a uh, hell of a match between Willie and Sammy. Uh, funny note I have here, Trent, is uh, when Sammy does the spit slap, you know, the, the spit slap to yeah. the chest. Uh, Josh yeah. says on commentary that uh, Sammy's been getting fined for that move, and Don chimes in and says Sammy pays for the fines out of the Chris paycheck. So I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm glad to know that OVE has a Trent's PayPal system going on in their crew. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant yeah. that's brilliant no i actually i noted that because he was uh he was it was you know did that gross spit that spit thing but it made for a louder a louder uh chop mm. you know it kind of went made, made, give that extra like that that little wetness disgusting. to that chop man disgusting it's gross. It's disgusting but, it's scumbag. But, you know but, willie mack he did his best he uh tried hard but Came up short in the end. Sammy picks up the win with his signature Cactus Driver 97, Cactus Special 97. I forget what he calls it, but it's a hell of a pile driver. Yeah, no, it's great. He's uh, I like that he uses it, man. It's pretty cool. Uh, and were there any promos after this? Yeah, there yeah any... we get um, yep. Eli Drake backstage blindfolded, uh, wearing a blindfold. Uh, oh, yeah, this, this, is this, this, this was the classic stuff. picture that was going around. And uh, while you're at it, tribe members, get on uh, the We Talk Impact Instagram account. That's right, at We Talk Impact. Uh, you know me with my memes. I made a funny little meme where I took the image of Eli Drake blindfolded and I remade the Bird Box like poster. Do you know what Bird Box is, Trent? I know you're. Like out of touch and out of like mainstream society and all that, but like, do you have you heard about this bird box thing? I feel you know, I'm I'm out of touch. <laughs> I'm a little bit. I, I I mean not really, but yeah, no, I've heard of it. It's everybody fucking. You know, you know how things are when something catches on now, dude. They they kill it. They they, they murder it. It's, it was everywhere. It was everywhere, dude. Everywhere I looked, there's this blindfold shit was going on. I had to be relevant with my meme game though. But I gotta say, when you did it. Uh, it didn't register to me right away. I was like, what the hell is, oh, burn box. So then I got it. Oh, that's <laughs> but, the story of my life, man. I'm always too quick. I'm always ahead of everybody. Too quick. You're always ahead of the curve, my friend. That's right. That's right. That's, but yeah, so we get the quick little, cutting edge. yeah, yeah. We get the quick little Eli Drake abyss few recap video package as usual. They've been killing this whole entire uh, pay-per-view so far. Then we get the match, Eli Drake versus abyss and the monster's ball. The funny thing about this uh, promo, though, before uh, the match was that at the end there, Eli Drake said uh, <laughs> he's going to punch Abyss's ticket. This is Monster's Ball, but Eli Drake is the man with the Monster Balls. <laughs> Legend. Monster Balls. Legendary. How do you like Eli Drake's new vest he was sporting there in the entrance? I love it. Loved it. It was cool. He wore it the next day at the tapings, too. He uh, It's a cool. I like that logo he's got. It's kind of like this abstract type of logo. I like that. I like that. It's like this. That, he definitely made it himself. He's very good with that. Like, he apparently he made the, the theme song he's using now. The dun, yeah. dun, dun. He produced that himself online. I think there's a YouTube video, actually. Check that out. Maybe I'll link it in the YouTube description here. It's a video of him producing that himself on his computer. <laughs> But I, yeah. Yeah, very, very, you know, very creative, Eli Drake. But no, hell of a hardcore match here. Abyss, I love the monster, Abyss. But uh, Abyss didn't look too good in this match, Trent. I'm going to keep it honest with you. And I'm not disrespecting a TNA legend. It was very important for him to be there. He's a day one guy. But, you know, age catches up to everybody. And there's, you know, it wasn't a good look for Abyss, that table spot, Trent. I, what did you guys think? You mean the uh, table the one Eli went through the tables? Yes, where he, Abyss unfortunately smacked his head on the table. It was a, it was a bad look. I, I just, I love Abyss, but maybe in ring competition, you know, maybe those aren't, maybe that's not what he should be doing these days. Well, you know, it was one of those things where, luckily, in a case like this, it was so chaotic that I don't think, I don't think the casual viewer minded. It was like, yeah, he tipped over and. Everybody was too focused on watching Eli smash through that table. Yeah, total shit show, total shit show. But uh, no, in that spot there, Abyss slapped his head on the table, and I think that led to, at least attributed to the finish because Eli Drake broke the boat oar over Abyss's head. Yeah, dude, it, it, people were hot for it. Th yeah. This match had a lot oh, of yeah. uh, had a lot of cool spots, man. What do you think he was planning with the zip ties there? And I got zip tied once. Uh, did you know the police zip tie people instead of using handcuffs sometimes? It's a true I've, story. I've heard about that. True I, story. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. I'm not a fucking. I'm not a fucking convict here. I was friend, in the wrong though. place at the wrong time. I, yeah, I'm sure you were. I'll tell you about that another time. But uh, yeah, sure. no. What do you think he was planning with the zip ties? Because obviously it didn't work out. I thought he was just trying to to tie him up to you know, kind of just incapacitate him. You know, break classic the boat like horror over his head that way. Yeah, like classic, you know, handcuff, zip tie, zip tie kind of move. But, uh, dude, people went nuts for it. It was the thumbtack spot 
was Ooh, insane. Brutal, brutal. Eli brutal. Drake walking away with all the tacks in his back was a gruesome visual. They all stayed in his back. You notice a lot of times thumbtacks will fall out of a guy's back. They all stayed in his back. And I'll, let me let me interject one thing here. Uh, I I got to hang out with the, the with most of the roster at the after party on the broad on uh, downtown Nashville over there. You went to Eli. the after party. Actually, it was like an impromptu after party. Kind of right. turned into something. I'm out. I'll... I quit. I'm done. <laughs> See you later, everybody. <laughs> See ya. All right, I'll, I'll continue this on. Okay, all right. So uh, maybe I can get Dancing Mike on here or something. Uh, some... Whoopsie, what are you doing? You're a Long Island guy. Hey, Whoopsie, get over to the Kyle's Garage and get on that microphone. It's a hot mic. No, no, no. I'm here, Trent. Tell me about the after party. Uh, oh, so we were hanging at the uh, the after party, and uh, I was talking to Eli. He remembered me from Orlando, and... Um, we're talking. I said, uh, "I said, how you, how's your back?" And he goes, uh, "It's not my traditional type of match. I'm sore." But he goes, uh, "Dude, that back." He goes, "You know, he goes. I pulled out the first thumbtack when I got back there. I was like, all right, you know, a little bit of a poke. Pulled the second one out. He goes, dude, there was forty. There was like forty-eight thumbtacks in his back. And he was like, by the time they got to the forty-eighth one, I was like, son of a bitch, you know, this fucking hurts. So yeah, th- Eli Drake had a lot of thumbtacks in his body. <laughs> Brutal, brutal. But he, he took it all in stride, man. <laughs> but uh, great match, great yeah, match. Definitely, Jimmy. definitely a great match there. Good old sloppy slugfest. Brutal. But uh, then we get Killer Cross backstage with McKenzie doing what he always does, the Killer Cross interviews uh, on another level, totally on another level. And even though he wasn't part of the show, so to speak, as far as the match card goes, him cutting this promo, let me know and all the people at home, keep your eye on Killer Cross. <laughs> He's going to do something tonight. Something is going to happen with Killer Cross, and it did, and we'll get there. But, yeah, quick little Killer Cross interview with McKenzie. Then uh, the camera cuts ringside, and we see the douchebags from Survivor hanging out. We'll uh, get to them later. But, yeah, the camera yeah. let us know that the douchebags from Survivor are in the building. Let me get a yep. quick little LAX promo, uh, the same promo we opened up on uh, last week's uh, review with uh, – Nice little promo there. And then we get uh, the match, LAX versus Lucha Brothers. Uh, match of the year, I think, so far, even though we're only in January, the first month of the year. I'm going with match of the year already. Stole the show, I think. Stole the show. Um, the only thing I think people were a little bummed about was the result, but everything that happened in this match was unreal, man. I can't even put in the words, dude. Uh, that The asylum was on fire with this one. Everybody was popping hard. With this, because they, dude, it, it was like you, you really didn't know. Everybody was kind of banking on the Lucha Brothers win. Everybody's like, ah, they're gonna win this. You know, it's, it's in the bag. The story's been built. That's it. But when that, um, when that pinfall came, everybody was shocked. But you know, it was like a good shock. It was like people were still happy because the match was five star match and not a boring minute at all. The only thing I was puzzled about, though, let's see if you caught this on TV or if any, any of the, any of the, uh, the tribe caught this. Uh, during the final pin, when I believe Santana was p- pinning Phoenix, uh, Penta was kind of like in range to run in and break up the pin, but he didn't. He kind of just like watched it. Like he, I don't know if he was winded. He kind of had this thing where he kind of got up and he was on the outside. It was a little winded, but he kind of like it looked to us from our point of view that he he could have very well run in and and, and broken up the pin, but he no. Didn't. That was a bit of a controversy. Um, people were saying that Ortiz stepping off of him was supposed to, you know. Uh, just knock him off his game there but uh i don't know it was a bit of an awkward uh scenario there at the very end but could you see that on tv yeah no i know exactly what you're talking about but yeah don't let that take away from the glorious match that this was it was was majestic trent it was a majestic example of tag team wrestling uh lax versus the lucha brothers um if this was an impact wrestling and this took place anywhere else you'd have assholes like Meltzer doing the five star whatever it is that he does uh this match isn't gonna get its fair share of uh publicity because people have this stink against impact wrestling whatever it is but we're gonna do it justice here like the podcast but we're gonna do it justice here on the podcast like we always do Trent and uh tell it like it is LAX versus Lucha Brothers was just tag team wrestling at its best there was so much that happened. Like, honest, this is like as cliche as this term is. If you blinked, you missed it. Honestly, if you we were losing our fucking mind in the seats, man. Like it, everybody was losing their mind. This one was nuts. 
So there's yeah. one spot in the match that really made me cringe hard, and like I'm not saying like it was an awful match or anything like that, but just the pain made me jump out of my seat. There's a spot there where um, <laughs> Pentagon sits down LAX on the ramp, like sits them down perfectly, and then he as Phoenix dives out, he kind of belly to bellies Phoenix into LAX, and it's just like Phoenix going back first right into the ramp. Did you see that spot? Yeah, I did. I, did. I thought the same thing. It was so brutal, man. I don't know how these guys sometimes do it. Like, how, how they take this I guess pain, those Lucha man. brothers really do have no fear. It's not, man. Zero fear. Match Zero of the year candidate theater. for sure, though. I think we could both agree on that. No doubt. No doubt about it, man. It was it was definitely it, – it's already leading the way. So, yeah, they, they, you know what's funny? I thought it was funny out of this, though, Kyle, is that after this aired on Homecoming, I think like three indies booked this same match. I saw that. I saw that. AEW being one of them. AEW booked it, House of Glory booked it, and then somebody else. I can't remember it. But even taking Santana was like, taking on the road. Even Santana was like, eh, and another one. I, he, oh, he said, I guess this is a thing now. <laughs> and then he, then he kept putting, and here's another one, and here's another one. So I thought it was pretty funny. You know what, Trent? We were paranoid. We thought that Conan was going to turn on the boys here at the end of this match. And he came out at the end, and I, I thought... I thought that's what was going to happen. Maybe, yeah, they won. They couldn't get the belts off of him, but he was still going to kick them in the balls at the end and leave with the Lucha Brothers. But we're paranoid, Trent, apparently, because that did not happen. It was a very nope. feel-good moment. It was like a father coming out and uniting all his boys that just beat the shit out of each other. You know, it was it was a great feel-good moment when Papa Conan came out there with everybody. Papa Conan did, and he, uh, he got a huge pop. And, man, I was, I was so bummed that when, they, when they all kind of raised their arms together. Usually they face hard cam, which they did, but then they turn towards us, and I didn't have my camera ready. That would have been a great shot to get, man. I was bummed. You know what, though, Trent? Our paranoia isn't for no reason. Like we said earlier in the show, very well can still happen in Mexico. I'm I'm banking on Mexico, honestly. I think in Mexico, we're going to see some shit go down. Uh, There's no way it just ends like that. After all that heat, no way. But uh, LAX are the best tag team in the world, no doubt, and uh, this was my favorite match of the entire pay per view. Yeah, I yeah, this stuff this stole the show for sure. Definitely, definitely. But then we get Mackenzie Mitchell backstage with Gail Kim, referee Gail Kim. Nice uh, referee shirt on there. Ooh. Oh man, that shirt that shirt had people uh, people twitching. Oh uh, yes, twitching. Uh, lucky night for Mr. Robert Irving, Chef Robert Irving. But uh, Gail says she's gonna call it right down the line. Don't got to tell us that twice. I figured she was going Ooh. to. <laughs> but, uh, so then we get the quick little Tessa versus Ty <laughs> recap video there, Trent. And, uh, yes, sir. Tessa versus Ty at Knockouts Championship match. Uh, let's talk about this match. Give me give me the view from the crowd. Tessa versus Ty was very pro Tessa, I got to say. People were all about Tessa in Nashville. Really? People very- love the heels these days, man. I'm telling you. The, the, the person that cheated. Cheated in all the matches. They're, they're rooting for her. They love it. You know, the thing is, it, it's it's an era of. It's funny because R- Russo talks about this a lot. How people and, and a lot, of, actually, a lot of a lot of the old school guys talk about this. They say like it's funny because people are more into the athleticism now than the characters. And it's like if a guy can work, they're more into that than than a compelling character. Because so it's like and the funny thing and the, and the twist that they talk about is they're all these are all predetermined matches. They're not real fights. But people are more into the work rate than they are like the performance of character. So there Tessa's the better wrestler. So they're into Tessa. That's the era we live in now. They're into Tessa. So people were they were hot for her, man. Uh, you know, Ty it was it was I'm not gonna say a split crowd, it was definitely 70 30 Tessa, I gotta say. No doubt, no but doubt. People but, were into Ty Ty too, but it was a um it, to me, I felt like it was the better, the best match that they've had so far. I think so. I, I didn't like the Bound for Glory one too much. I thought it was, uh, it was a little, it was a little short. That was one thing. I thought Bound for Glory match was a little short. They really didn't get to, um, get to hit that, that third gear. This one, I felt like they got to hit all the gears. You had Gail get involved. There was a little involvement from Gail. It was a good match. Taya was a little, was a little shaky at times on this one. How did it come off on TV? I, I thought she had a hell of a performance. I thought she did great. But uh, I got to ask you this, Trent. Uh, don't you think it's a little strange how all right, Taya lost the, what was it, two previous matches? Yeah. Because Tessa cheated. Now, this time around, the third match, Taya wins 
after the referee hits her finishing move, which Taya picks her up and directly hits her finishing move, the road to Valhalla, after, you know, Gail hits the eat defeat. Isn't it interesting how, like, Taya didn't cheat the first two times and she couldn't pick up the win, but the time that Gail Kim kind of leads to her win, isn't that interesting? She, she, she should have been more like Tessa the whole time. I think uh, I think that might lead to something. Hmm. I'm just guessing because that that's an observation, right? That's like she needed to kind of have the assistance to win. She need yeah. she needed to end up cheating, even though she kept calling out Tessa for being a cheater. She needed to cheat to win. Yeah, exactly. If I were Tessa, I'm gonna be on the next episode of Impact bitching to management about how I got hit with the referee's finishing move in the last yeah. two seconds of the match. I, can I also say that I love the name of Gail's finishing move, Eat, eat Defeat. I mean, obviously, feet are involved, her foot's involved. It's just one of the most clever finishing name, finishing move names I've ever heard. You're one of those guys that are a sucker for stupid puns, aren't you? I love, dude, I love puns. Pun, pun always intended. Pun, people say, oh, no pun intended. No, you fucking meant the pun because you wouldn't have said no pun intended if he didn't, if he didn't uh, mean the pun. You said the pun because you knew it was a pun. That's how puns work. Very puns punny. are on purpose. Very punny very, of you, Trent. Very punny guy. But uh, so Taya, Taya picks up the win after Gal Kim hits eat the feet on Tessa, which leads to Taya picking up Tessa for the road to Valhalla. Taya picks and up the win. Taya is the new Impact Wrestling Knockouts champion. Good match and there. You. Yep. Very good match. Very solid match. Yep. Yep. Uh, do you think? And I want to ask the uh, the tribe here too. Do you guys think this leads to Gail coming out of retirement for a match against Tessa? Has what do you to. think? Huh? Has to. Gail's not even really retired. They, they tricked you. They tricked you. Gail I mean, she hasn't wrestled in a while. Of, she's coming out of retirement and wrestling, wrestling Tessa, no doubt. Think so? You think that's going to happen? What, I, I you know, think so. We'll you see. Think they, they, you think they should build it for a while? Like, let, like really, really build this one up? Yeah, but this time around, I don't want to see Gail serve justice. I want to see the torch get passed. I want to see Tessa knock Gail right on her ass and pick up the win, personally, if, if we're even going to go in that direction. But let's let's stay on track here, Trent. Uh, moving along here, we get Mackenzie Mitchell backstage with Johnny Impact before the big match. Johnny cuts his uh, usual uh, awful promo. Uh, keeping not it a fan of Johnny. Keep not a fan of Johnny promos, man. No, and I love Johnny Impact in the ring, but on the microphone, the guy's shit. You know, I, I've tried to be nice about it here on the show. You guys all give it to him, and I try to be nice. I I don't want to go against our champion. You know, I feel wrong doing that. But you got to be honest. Everything must be honest here. You know, it's it's a critique. It's an analysis. Uh, Johnny Impact not so strong with the promos. Now Killer Cross is very strong with the promos. So Johnny Impact probably should have started rolling with Killer Cross when he had the chance. He should have, man. He she really should have. I, I don't know. I I just, I hate his promos. I gotta say, I don't hate's a strong word, but man, I just can't take those promos. He he doesn't really he doesn't connect at it's all with those promos. His, his delivery is just so cheesy. Oh, so cheesy, man. And I'll tell you, I'll I'll tell you how that led into led into something later. I'm sure, but one way after we talk about the main event. But um, was there anything? What so they did? They get Cage backstage too, or no? Or was he just earlier? That was it. No, no, there was uh, there was no uh, cage uh, interview there. Uh, I'm sure he popped in with the promo earlier. You put me on the spot there, not that I can remember here at the second, but uh, I'm sure there was something in there earlier in the show. But no, right here, there was just a quick uh, Johnny Impact and McKenzie before the match starts. All right, perfect. And uh, so that was the match coming up. Now here we go. So this is main event. Main Brian event Cage. Time. Brian Cage. Johnny last. Impact. Sorry, BQ. Last. Last. Where it no, we're going paper. We're going order, bro. We're That's going right. order. That's right. Brian Cage came out with that Terminator thing, dude. Fucking blew everybody's mind. Everybody popped like crazy. I mean, they were hot for Cage. They were this this town wanted Cage, hundred percent. This was this guy was. It almost felt like he, you 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 would have thought we were in like L.A. where it's his hometown. Heroes fucking welcome on this one. Johnny gets booed. Wow. John, Johnny got booed. There was a not all not the whole crowd. He it was split obviously. But uh, there were a lot of boos for a heroic champion, man. I didn't uh, didn't think that was gonna happen, but um, a lot of boos for Johnny. But dude, I thought this was a great match. I thought Cage really, really was just. Re- I mean, this was like 
they said, "Hey, man, Brian Cage, this is your this is your chance. This is your spot. You got to take your you got to take it right here. You you have to take your moment, man. This is it." I thought this dude killed it. What do you think? I totally agree with you on that, John. Uh, <laughs> Brian Cage totally shined in this match. Uh, Huge. I loved it. I loved his performance. I thought he did great. I think Brian Cage is without a doubt the future of the company. Uh, he yep. is he is your guy in the future uh, with with proper build and you know preparation. But Brian Cage is a future Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion, no doubt in my mind. No doubt, dude. People wanted it, man. Uh, the finish, though. <sighs> I don't know, man. Let's talk like, about but, this. Let's talk about this. All right, Brian Cage I'll, clearly wins with the drill claw, but the referee is being distracted by the survivor douchebags that we've been talking about. Uh, the goddamn survivor douchebags. I knew they were there for a reason. The referee gets distracted while Brian Cage well, Cage shoved him. Let's let's not let's not put that out. He did. Cage he did put his hands him. on them. He did. He did. It, but he was responding to them. No, weren't they getting rowdy? They were getting rowdy, and they were talking a mad shit. He shoved one of them. The guy's drink went flying. And he shot like the dude. It was funny. Like he shoved the guy. Like you'd open a like a push like a push open door, like just that red casual push. This guy went like Brian Cage's muscles. How strong is that guy? Is like what was just nothing to him. This guy fucking went like he took it hard. Like this this guy went flying. But bottom uh, line, Brian Cage <laughs> won that match. He had that match in the bag when he hit the drill claw. That was his match. That was his win right there. So then. Yep. Moments later, you know, Johnny Impact ends up rolling up Cage for the win. It was it was a bullshit ending, man. It was one of those bullshit endings where it was like, uh, what? What just happened? Like, we were all just confused. Like, what? Like, he just rolled him up like that? And I was pissed off, Trent. I was ticked off. I felt like I had gotten robbed. Everything I had loved in that pay-per-view, which was the entire pay-per-view up until that point, I felt like it threw everything out the window. I was pissed until I saw Killer Cross. Oh, man. Killer Cross comes out. Mm -hmm. Ty dives at him, picks her up, power bombs her into the crowd. I, I didn't see it going in that direction. Did you guys? No. Because here's the thing. Here, here's where I think it is brilliant. You you had Cross always in this mix of, like, everybody wanted Cross to take the belt the final hour. He didn't take it. Johnny beats him. He was you know, People are like, oh, he's still pretty young. Dude, the, Johnny wins, and he's getting fucking booed. Like hardcore booed in that in the asylum. The asylum was not having it. Tessa comes out and you see her like say something to Johnny, like almost like, like I can't believe this reaction. Like it, it seemed like she was stunned by the reaction. And uh, they're you know they're posing and stuff, uh, kind of soaking in some cheers, more booze. But uh, they you know and then, then you saw they climbed, they went up, up the ramp, and then yeah, he attacks. He attacks Johnny and Tessa, power bombs are in the crowd. That, because of how pissed people were for the match result, they loved Cross attacking Tessa even more. What and does like, that tell you about society, Trent? These people, Killer Cross attacked a man's wife. He attacked a woman, and the people loved it. They, they, you know what, they the, couldn't get the, enough of it. The sick thing is, I think people, <laughs> what it says about society is that if uh, it's okay to attack a woman as long as you hate their hate, you hate her husband. Wow. So like, yeah, I hate, I hate her, her douchebag husband. You can hit her. <laughs> but that's what it comes off to me. I don't know. But dude, people popped so hard. Now let me ask you this: Tribe, please tell me this. Did you guys hear the kill cross kill chant starting from the audience? Yes, Trent. Um, I'll tell you. Um, it was a beautiful ending because the way they closed out the show. He hits the power bomb. They zoom in on his face, and you already know he's got that killer cross look on his face. His eyes are bulging out of his head. You see every single vein in his neck popping out, and uh, the crowd chants, "Kill cross, kill, kill cross, kill, kill cross, so, kill," and the show fades out with the kill uh, cross kill chants. The show awesome. perfectly faded out with the kill cross kill chant. The show ended on the note of kill, cross, kill. And that's insane, Trent. We're talking throughout this whole review here how we're in this era now where a lot of people go for the heels more than they go to for the baby faces. Dude, Killer Cross powerbombed the man's wife off the stage, and the crowd loved it and chanted kill, cross, kill, kill, cross, kill. Well, let me look, can I, I'm going to add something here. Me and Cousin Brian started that chant. That was our chant. We kicked it off in our section. 
That was us. It, it reminded me, Trent, of seven years ago when I was still proud to be a Ring of Honor fan in the Killstein Kill era. You know what I mean? It brought me yep. back to that. That the last time I enjoyed Ring of Honor, I'm not a Ring of Honor fan anymore. I'm not into it. But the last time I liked Ring of Honor was around that era. And just the kill cross kill. I felt some some Kevin Steen, not Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen vibes in the air. Same. I mean, that, that was kind of the vibe. I'm like, well, he's got kill in his name. I'm going to use this. Yeah, and, I, uh, I think a kill cross kill shirt, I, I, I thumbs up on that. I would totally rock a kill cross kill shirt. He, uh, You'll be happy to know that he tweeted out and said, Thanks to Nashville, a Kill Cross Kill shirt is being developed. Oh, I'm getting myself one of those. And I tweeted to him and I said, I'm proud to say I started that chant. And then some guy responded and said, no royalties, Marks, no royalties. And I said, (laughs) and I responded back saying, no royalties, pal, just fashion. That's all I care about. That's it. And cross like that. So that was cool, man. Um, That went over great. But that's the thing. It got... Like it got cross over even more. Now, I'm not gonna spoil anything for the TV tapings the next day. I'm not gonna say anything about them. I want you guys to watch them. The first one's gonna be on Friday, the 11th. Don't you which, dare! I'll kill you. Oh no! You no! I don't want. I don't. I'm not. I I hate spoilers. I'm just gonna say that it is extremely compelling TV that you're gonna be that you're gonna be seeing on Pursuit and Twitch. What we saw the TV tapings. Was fantastic. I basically want to say to everybody, you need not fear anything you might be fearing coming out of the pay per view. Everything is written incredibly. Wow. So Trent, let me ask you. You said at the pay per view, um, you guys didn't see any promos or backstage stuff on the screen during the tapings. Did you see anything up on the screen? No, nothing. Uh, nothing during the tapings either. But that's kind of a good thing because now you can go home and still watch, watch the episodes with a fresh mind, where you don't know everything that's going to happen. That's pretty cool. It gives everybody that was there a reason to go home and still look forward to seeing the episode. Absolutely, it gives gives me a reason to watch. Yeah. So no, I dug it, man. It was it was fun. The tapings were very interesting. Uh, I like I said, I'm not going to spoil anything on them. It was uh, it was great. To, to be there for those so that's going to be the next two episodes so yeah then then, then they're off to mexico uh they're leaving for mexico on friday they're actually heading to mexico for two days of taping so that should be fun too but yeah man that was homecoming what a great show i i'm so happy we were, i was interacting i was posting a lot of tweets from our from the total non-stop impact twitter which was found at we talk impact give us a follow guys I was t- posting results and photos from there, and people were really interacting with us. Picked up a bunch of new followers. Thank you, guys. That was great. I loved it. It was cool. Like You inspired me to do it because you're like, hey, you're going to be there live. Nothing beats a live perspective. Tweet it from the pod. Yeah, there's, there's like, no reason why we should have one of our guys at the show and not doing any sort of live tweeting. That would be missed opportunity. Now, me personally, Trent... I wanted you to go up to people with a voice recorder and harass them and ask them questions, but not not this time. We'll do that together next time we're at a show together. Okay, yeah, no, we, you and I definitely have to go to a show together again and do that for sure. But, uh, but uh, bottom line, man, Impact Homecoming, hell of a pay-per-view. Now, I'll be honest, the audio and video, uh, there was a few hiccups here throughout the show, so it's not perfect in that regard, but... I feel like the roster, everybody there brought their A game. Everybody worked hard as usual. That's the story of Impact Wrestling, the hardest working roster in wrestling today. Hell of a show, Trent. Uh, I'm not going to do the rating system here, but five stars, two thumbs up, whatever you want to call it. And two two joints sparked, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Two joints. Great pay per view. This pay per view will have a, a nice spot on your DVD shelf for sure. You know what's cool? They were already selling pre orders at the show. Oh, wow. You- you could pre-order Homecoming. They like had a, a form, and you can do. They had to show the artwork and everything. They're like you can order it right now, and it, it ships. I think uh, they had a date on there. I can't remember, but they're like pre-order it right now, and it'll ship out. But I, I was sure as hell to pick up a few DVDs. I got the oh. last. I got, I got last year's pay-per-views: Redemption, awesome. Slamversary, and Bound for Glory. And anything catch your eye at the merch table, like any T-shirts or anything that you, you haven't seen on the website or anything. They did, apparently there's a new Rascal shirt. I didn't see it. It was not there. Everything else at the merch table they, is stuff on the website currently. Uh, they brought everything this time, though. As opposed to New York, they brought everything to this show. Awesome. So everything was there. Awesome. Uh, a lot of cool merch going. Yeah, they were. What got me though was 
I bought like on the website on shopimpact.com. If you buy, there was a package like a one one set deal. If you buy all three pay per view DVDs from last year, you get the free Bound for Glory bag, and uh, they had it there. So I asked the girl, I go, hey, if I buy all three of these, do I get the bag? And she goes, no, they're separate. And I go, I go, but on the, on the website, it's all you know, it's like a package deal. She goes, no, they told me it's just everything's separate. I'm like, come on, throw the bag in. What's the harm? But couldn't do that, bastards. Do that. But I did, I did a. Uh, I did pick you up a little gift there, Kyle. Got you a little something. A gift for me. I got you a little something, Kyle. Okay. And, and I want Dancing Mike. Don't think we forgot about your stuff. It's coming very soon. It's coming. Promise. But um, while we were there, I got you, Kyle. I got to send this out to you. I got you a 2019 Impact calendar, my friend. You know what, Trent? I promise you. I was just thinking in my head. The only thing I wanted from that show is the damn calendar. So thank you. Got yourself a calendar, kid. Is it all hot? Is it all knockouts? Is it like a hot babe calendar, or we got we got the guys in there too? No, nothing wrong with that. I'm just just seeing what we're working with here. You know, is it like a male demo thing, or is it like you know for everybody? No, no, you got the guys in there too, but you got your babes in there too, so it's a little bit of everything. I, I like to look at a oiled up, chiseled abs as well. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of abs in Impact Wrestling. Lots of abs. Nothing Lots wrong of with abs. That. I think even Willie Max got abs. The guy's got abs. He's look at that stamina. The guy's got abs. But um, underneath, the, you know, another yeah, he's, layer. He's got a keg, if not a six-pack. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, hey, good, great show, man. I'm going to wrap this up with our plugs, Kyle. Is there anything else I'm missing? Nah, good uh, little uh, homecoming review. Glad to hear your uh, in-house perspective, hearing about the trip. You know, you had fun with Cousin Brian and all that. I should have been there. It wasn't as good as it should have been because I wasn't there. But if I had come with you guys and traveled with you, you would have had a much better time. But for what it was, it sounds like you enjoyed yourself and had a good time. And that's all that matters. It's Impact Wrestling. Absolutely. And the one thing I want to say, I put a tweet out, and uh, it was a little from the heart. You know, Kyle, it was from the heart. I said, uh... I waited 16 years to come to that building to watch a show because I watched every – I've never missed an Impact broadcast, watched everything from that building. And uh, I said it was special to me because TNA, now Impact, was the company that made me fall back in love with wrestling after WCW and ECW closed. That year, that one year was a very tough year for me without anything else. And Impact is the what brought me back into – what made me love it again. So for me to go back to that go go to that building for the first time and experience it, it was pretty cool, man. It really felt it really felt special to me, and I uh, it hit me. I was there. I was like, I can't I can't believe I'm here. Oh, I got I got to put one thing in, Kyle. Before I go, before we go, I got to put I had one thing. I got to go inside what was the sports entertainment extreme locker room. I got to go inside of it. Did you take any pictures? I did. I got a picture of me and a couple of the guys in there because that was the room. My, now, my buddy Basil, who's my co-host on the Backstage Boys podcast, he was doing ringside photography. They set that up as his little like office where he did some of the um, promo photos, too. He was doing like portrait photos of all the guys. So all the photos you guys see in 2019, that's my, my boy Basil did all those photos. But um, they set that up for him, like a little office. And so I was like, oh, shit. he's like, I'm going to be in here. I'm like, wait a minute. That's the sports entertainment extreme locker room, oh, man. Dude, I mean, it's just a locker room. It's a mini locker room, but you know, I was marking out. I was like, "This is the fucking locker room! Holy shit!" You know, and I got to see all those like little doorways where like different people were speared and jumped off of balconies. Dude, it was it was just surreal to be there, man. I, I, everything I wanted for the past sixteen years, I just I got to oh, feel so, it all. So when I it, there. it was an emotional, heartfelt experience for you, Trent. Oh, dude, dude, absolutely. Hey, and there's there's only one thing I could say to you, Trent. What's that? Oh, good for you. <laughs> well, I got the experience and I'm happy with it. But uh, guys, thank you very much for listening. Kyle, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug. Give us, give us the plug skis here. What do you think, Kyle? Will you hurry Ready? up already? All right, all right. You can find this podcast at uh, Total Nonstop Impact is found. I'm sorry, whoa, I screwed that one up. Whoa, you can find this podcast on Facebook, Twitter. Instagram at We Talk Impact. Type in We Talk Impact in the search bar and Total Nonstop Impact Podcast will show right up. You can also find us on YouTube at the Impact Lounge uh, or our personal YouTube channel, which is found at Total Nonstop Impact. You can also find this podcast as a streaming podcast, not just a YouTube video. You can find it at wherever podcasts are found Apple, iTunes, Stitcher. SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and Spotify. Rate, review, subscribe. 
Tell a friend, tell an enemy, tell your mother, tell somebody, tell an Impact fan, tell a fan of something else. Make them listen to this. We got people who go on site for pay-per-views, God damn it. This is first-hand perspective. We got Kyle with the sound bites. We got Kyle talking shit. We got Kyle sparking ju- well, I'm not gonna get into that. But we yeah, we got we got all sorts of fun going on here, guys. Tell a friend, tell him to come out here and join the party. Uh Kyle, what the hell else did I miss? Did I miss anything? Anything? Yeah, you missed this. Good night, everybody. We're out of here. We'll see you later, everybody. See you next week.